Hi guys, welcome to a little cranial nerve coloring video. I found this coloring book and this was one of the pages that was still clean and so I thought I would do a little video and revise the cranial nerves so I don't know if you need to know about the cranial nerves but hopefully if you do this will be informative and if you don't then I hope that it's still relaxing relaxing for you okay so let's jump right into it. There are 12 pairs of nerves and they can be general, which means that they do general things that other nerves can also do. Or they can be special like this one. And that means that they do things that only cranial nerves can do. So, in addition to that, they can also either be afferent with an A, meaning that they bring information to the brain, like sensory information, or they can be efferent with an E, meaning that they take information away from the brain, like motor commands and information like that. Your motor commands can go to skeletal muscle, which are your voluntary muscles, or it can go to smooth muscle and glands and automatic structures. If it goes to skeletal muscle, it is somatic information. And if it goes to glands, then it's visceral information. So that's how they are categorized. So the nerve moves through a hole in the skull from the brain to where it needs to be. So we'll start with number one. And number one is the olfactory nerve. And the hole that it moves through is more like a system of many tiny holes called the cribriform plate. Cribriform plate. And the cribriform plate is in the nasal cavity right up here this whole piece. So the nerves move through and pick up anything that enters the nose. And so you might have guessed that the function of the olfactory nerve is smell. So that is a special sensory or a special, sorry, a special somatic afferent. Afferent with an A, meaning that it is sensory information coming to the brain. And it moves through the cribriform Next up, 
we have number two, which is the optic nerve. So the optic nerve moves via the optic canal to the retina where it receives light information and so that is another special somatic afferent bringing information to the brain and that function is sight Next, we have the oculomotor nerve, that is number three. The oculomotor nerve is exactly what the name suggests. It sends motor information or motor commands to the extraocular muscles. The extraocular muscles are the muscles around the eye that control in which direction you look. So there is a little mnemonic and it goes SO4 LR6 meaning that the lateral rectus which is this muscle the lateral rectus is controlled by cranial nerve 6 and the superior oblique is controlled by cranial nerve 4 the other eye muscles the other extraocular eye muscles are all controlled by cranial nerve 3. So that is the oculomotor nerve. It moves through a foramen or a hole in the skull called the superior orbital fissure. And the other nerves that we mentioned, nerve 4 and 6, also come through the superior orbital fissure because they all go to the eye. So, in addition to the extraocular muscles that control the movement of the eyeball. Cranial nerve 3 also supplies the ciliary muscles, the sphincter muscles of the pupil, which control adjustment so that you can see things that are near or far, and the opening and closing, the dilation and constriction of the pupil, which controls focusing on objects in light and dark conditions. So, when you adjust what you're seeing according to how near or far it is, you are not doing that voluntarily, that's automatic. So, that function is a general visceral efferent function, but the movement of the eyeball up, down to the side is largely under your control and that is a general somatic efferent function. Okay, so 
I just realized that I was chatting away and I colored these two green as well but that's fine, who cares so the next one is number four it's one that I've already colored in already colored in green but we'll just go over it and that's the trochlea nerve and as we already said, the trochlear nerve supplies the superior oblique muscle. So that's a general somatic efferent. The fifth nerve is interesting. It's actually three nerves. It's called the trigeminal nerve and it has three branches. I'm gonna pause because my foot is asleep. I will be right back. Okay, so we're back. And we were talking about number five and how the trigeminal nerve is three branches. So the first branch is the ophthalmic nerve which supplies the forehead and the skin of the face up to just below the nose. So the trigeminal nerve is largely in control of sensation in the face, but it also has motor functions and so that makes it a mixed nerve and so it controls the sensation of the forehead, the maxillary branch, which is the second branch, controls sensation of the cheek and the mandibular branch controls sensation of the chin and the mandible as well as the ear going up to the temple as shown here so the movement of the facial muscles is not actually controlled by number five even though it controls the sensation the only movement that number five controls is chewing. So it gives motor information to the muscles of mastication to enable chewing. Okay. The holes in the skull or the foramen that these nerves go through are the superior orbital fissure. So the ophthalmic nerve travels with nerves 3, 4, and 6 through the superior orbital fissure. The maxillary nerve goes through the foramen rotundum and the mandibular nerve moves through foramen ovale. Okay. Then moving on to number 6. I might have used this color already, let's see. Yes, that's different, I think. So, number six is the abducent nerve. And as we mentioned, it moves through the superior orbital fissure with these nerves to supply the lateral rectus muscle to control the movement of the eyeball laterally. So that would be a general sensory, I mean, I always do that, a general somatic efferent. So GSE, general somatic efferent with motor information. 
number seven is the facial nerve so the facial nerve as we said controls the movement of the facial muscles and in addition to that it also supplies the glands in the face so those would be the submandibular glands sublingual glands the lacrimal glands which produce tears so that's somatic and visceral motor functions and then in addition to that it also has a special sensory function so it's a very mixed nerve the special sensory function is that it delivers taste information from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue so the front two-thirds of And the facial nerve moves through the internal acoustic meatus. You can see that it is subdivided into two here because some of it goes to the superficial muscles, muscles of the face and some of it moves to the glands and tongue next we have the vestibulocochlear nerve number 8 which moves with the facial nerve through the internal acoustic meatus and this nerve is purely sensory it has a special somatic afferent function it supplies the cochlea and oh that was <laughs> that was so bad and the um structures in the ear that govern balance and so it is responsible for hearing next up is number nine number nine is known as the glossopharyngeal nerve and it moves through the jugular foramen the jugular foramen is quite a big hole in the skull through which 9, 10 and 11 move and number 9 has a mixed function as well it controls taste or delivers taste for the back third of the tongue it also goes to the middle ear to supply structures there which are also involved in hearing because they are involved in the transmission of the sound wave to the cochlea which actually interprets the information and the motor fibers of this mixed nerve go to pharyngeal muscles involved in swallowing so stylopharyngeals the upper pharyngeal muscles and then it also has a visceral function by supplying the parotid gland which is the huge salivary gland in the side of the face so that's number nine number ten as we said also moves through the jugular foramen 
and that's the vagus nerve and it travels quite a long way and it has mixed functions as well its primary functions or its predominant functions are motor um, it supplies the heart, lungs, palate pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi there's a whole list even the gastrointestinal tract and it is involved in the parasympathetic nervous system and in addition to that it also brings sensory information from the external ear and from the internal organs like the heart and trachea it also controls some of the swallowing the more um, the more involuntary part of swallowing the peristalsis it can also control so it's a very important and long traveling nerve and then number 11 is the accessory nerve it's quite a bit simpler it is just a motor nerve with a general somatic efferent function and that function is to control the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid muscles in the neck and shoulder and so it controls the ability to shrug turn the head and it moves through the jugular foramen finally the hypoglossal nerve number 12 is a sensory nerve I mean it's a motor nerve and it supplies the tongue so the ability to really uh, enunciate speak is due to the action of the hypoglossal nerve sending motor commands to the tongue and that nerve moves through the hypoglossal canal so that was a quick summary of the different cranial nerves I'm just writing in the foramen or canal that they move through and um, I hope it was some revision if you needed it internal acoustic meatus for number 8 and number 7 internal acoustic meatus I have foramen of valley for 5 as well as foramen rotundum for 5 
six, four, and three, move through the superior orbital fissure and this is the optic canal okay so number one is sensory number two is sensory smell and sight number three is motor movement of the eye, adjustment of the eye. Number four is motor movement of the eye. Number five is mixed. Sensation of the face and motor mastication, chewing. Number six is motor movement of the eye. Number seven is mixed as well. It is taste, some taste, and then movement of the face, and it controls the glands. Number eight is sensation, hearing. Number nine is mixed. It is also some taste, as well as swallowing motor information. Number 10 is mixed and that's the one that goes all the way down to the heart, to the intestine with both sensory and motor information. Number 11 is just motor and that's to the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid. And finally is purely motor as well and that controls the movement of the tongue. Okay. So that's the summary. Good luck in whichever way you're going to use this information and I'll see you again soon.